Good evening, Macedonia. Good evening, good evening, and welcome, welcome, welcome to this prayer service and Bible study on March 17th. Amen. My name is Minister Reverend Ayoko, and I welcome you. I'm super excited to give God the honor and the acknowledgement that he deserves and pray together as a body of Christ. If you have not yet, make sure that you hit that share button on whatever platform you are on because we are live not only on Facebook and YouTube, but also on our website. So make sure you share this broadcast, call your friends, call your neighbors, call your family, and make sure they join us right now live for prayer service and Bible study. Again, welcome. I'm super excited to get started and be with you today so that we can pray together. Make sure you come on in. Make sure you say hello to us in the comments so that we can make sure we shout you out later on in the service, okay? Awesome. So let's move on to our first prayer of the night. Our first prayer, prayer number one of the night is a prayer of thanks. We know that God always deserves our thanks. So we want to take this time for our prayer number one of thanks. And it's going to be coming from 1 Chronicles 16, verse 34. It says, oh, give thanks unto the Lord. That's right. Why do we do it? For he is good and his mercy endured forever. We have to give praise and thanks to our Lord because he is good at all times. He woke us up this morning. He started us on our way and he got us through the day and allowed us to be in Bible study tonight. So we want to pray a prayer of thanks. Whatever you went through today, whatever you saw today, give God some thanks right now. Ready? Let's take three, two minutes on this prayer. Ready and go. Amen, amen, Macedonia friends and family. We are praying together as a corporate body to our Lord. I already see the comments, everybody coming in. Hello, I see the family, amen. We are here. We have already prayed our first prayer of the night, a prayer of thanks to our God because he is good. But we want to make sure that we make sure that we pray prayer number two because we're not always good. Amen. So we want to pray a prayer of forgiveness because unlike our God, sometimes we mess up. Sometimes we slip up and make mistakes. And because of that, he has made a plan for us to be forgiven. So we want to pray a prayer number two, a prayer of forgiveness. Come out of 1 John chapter 1, verse 8 and 9. 1 John chapter 1, verse 8 and 9. It says, 
If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us, okay? If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. He said, don't deceive yourselves. You know you sin. You know you messed up. You know you fell short. So acknowledge that you did so and then come to me so that I can forgive you of those sins and not just forgive you, but clean you up so that you don't do it again. Amen. So we want to make those things known to our God. He knows we make mistakes. He knows we fall short, but we have to acknowledge them and bring them to him so that he can clean us up and make us right. So we want to take two minutes on this prayer. Number two, a prayer of forgiveness coming out of first John chapter one, verse eight and nine. Ready and pray. Amen to that song, media team, make me over again. He promises to make us over again. Praise God. We can mess up. We can cut. We can do all these things that we know we shouldn't do and be dirty and filthy, but he will clean us up and make us over again. Glory to God. Glory to God. Macedonia, we already prayed two prayers. So we want to continue our prayer service. But before we do, make sure you post those requests for later on in the evening. We got some prayer requests that we're going to do, some special prayer requests and bereavement later on. So make sure that you are posting your prayer requests as we are praying through these other prayers. And with that being said, let's go to prayer number three. Prayer number three, a prayer of mental health. We know this world throws some things at us and it takes a toll on us mentally. But God, Macedonia, God gives us a plan and a solution even for our mental health. And we're going to look at that solution come out of Philippians 4, verse 6 and 7. That's Philippians chapter 4 verse six through seven. It says, be careful for nothing. Another translation says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Let him know what you're going through. And then he promises you something. It says in verse seven, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Our God promises us peace in the midst of the storm, peace in the midst of the trial, peace in the midst of the hard situation. And we can obtain that. So whether it's you 
or somebody close to you that you know is struggling with mental health of any kind, we want to pray Philippians 4, 6, and 7 over their lives. We want to pray that they seek God, they pray, and they get, they obtain his peace that he promises, the peace that sustains, the peace that surpasses, excuse me, all understanding. Amen. So let's take two minutes on this prayer number three a prayer of mental health coming out of Philippians 4, verse 6 to 7. Ready and pray. Macedonia, welcome back. Macedonia, we handling business tonight. We are praying tonight on behalf of ourselves, on behalf of God's people. We are making our requests known to God and he is present with us, listening to our requests and making moves on our behalf. So we want to continue that. So if you have not yet, make sure you post what you have to pray for underneath in these comments, because later on, we're going to be praying for those special prayer requests and those sick and shut in and those bereaved families in the evening. So we want to make sure that we get your prayer requests known as well. So make sure that you are posting your prayer requests down below so that we can acknowledge those later on in the evening. Amen. Amen. Macedonia, we pray the prayer of thanks to our Lord. We pray that he forgive us of our sin. And Macedonia, we pray for our mental health. But some of us need some direction. Some of us are trying to make that next move, but not sure which way to go. So we want to make sure we pray our fourth prayer of the night, a prayer of direction. And we're going to be coming from Proverbs 5. Y'all know it. Proverbs 5, 5 through 6. It says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. We need to trust him and lean not into thine own understanding. Verse 6 says, in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Amen. We got to trust God. We got to trust and know that he got our back, that he's going to make a way, that he's going to show us where to go. And once we let go of the reins and allow him to do what he does best, then he will direct our paths, leaning not into our own understanding, but trusting that his understanding is bigger and better than ours. So we want to take two minutes on our prayer number four of the night, a prayer for direction coming out of Proverbs 5, verse 5 through 6. Ready and pray.
Amen. Welcome back, Macedonia. If you're praying, continue to pray because God is still listening. Amen. I see those prayer requests coming in in the comments already. So if you have not yet, make sure you continue to post your prayer requests so we can pray together later on in the evening about your specific requests. But we're going to keep moving because some of us just pray for direction. But some of you are like, I'm Reverend Ioka, I got direction, but I need some strength to do what God told me to do. I need some strength to go in the direction he asking me to go. So we want to pray prayer number five just for you. Prayer of strength. We're going to come from Isaiah 40, Isaiah 40 and 31 with our prayer of strength on tonight. And it says, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not get weary and they shall walk and not faint. Macedonia, God promises us strength tonight. So whatever it is, whatever it may be that you are struggling to have strength to do tonight, you can wait upon the Lord and he shall renew your strength to do and accomplish whatever you have set out to accomplish in his name. So we want to take two minutes on prayer number five, a prayer of strength coming from, coming from Isaiah 40 and 31. Ready and pray. Amen, Macedonia. If you're praying, continue to pray, but we're going to continue to move forward in this prayer service. We have prayed some prayers for ourselves, but we want to make sure we're not stingy with our prayers. We want to take a prayer time to pray not prayer number six, which is a prayer for our community. That's right. Our community. We know Macedonia is global. We know that Macedonia is not just at 1010 Chauncey Street in Albion, but we extend to several different cities, several different states and countries. So we want to make sure we pray for our community, whatever community we are connected to or living in. And we want to pray this prayer using Second Chronicles verse 7. I'm sorry, chapter 7, verse 8. That's Second Chronicles, chapter 7, verse 14. Excuse me. Second Chronicles, chapter 7, verse 14. Amen. We know it. We have read it. We have studied it. It says, For if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then... I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. He gives us a, a way to heal our land. But there are some things and requirements that are required 
for us to do. Amen. So we want to pray for our community, not just praying that God heals our land, but we want to pray that we do our part so that he can fulfill his promise. So let's take two minutes to pray for our community coming out of Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. <laughs> Ready and pray. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Macedonia. Our next prayer of the night, we're going to continue to roll through this service. Our next prayer of the night is a prayer of salvation. That's our job to be praying and helping get souls saved. Amen. So we want to take some time to pray. Prayer number seven, a prayer of salvation coming out of Romans 10 and 9. Romans 10 and 9. It says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. That's what the word says. And guess what, Macedonia? Believe it or not, there are souls connected to you. People that are waiting for you to get help, help them get to the kingdom. So whether it's your family member, whether it's a close friend, whether it's a co-worker or somebody that lives next to you, there are souls that you are are responsible for helping get to salvation. So we want to take some time that to not just pray for the salvation of others, but pray that we be used by God to help in that service. So we want to take some time, a pray, a prayer of salvation come out of Romans 10 and 9. Ready and go.
Amen, amen. Guess what, Macedonia? We've made it to our last and final prayer of the night. We want to make sure that we acknowledge those special prayer requests, those sick and shut in, and those bereaved families tonight. So if you have not yet, please hurry, go post your prayer requests down in the comments so that we can acknowledge those as well and pray together as a body on all our behalves. Amen. But first, our known sick and shut in is Sister Mary Atchison, Sister Nakisha Jones, Sister Mary Ann Atkins, Sister Melissa Young, Sister excuse me, Joanne Mitchell, Sister Rose Jackson, Sister Deanne Crawford, Sister Katana Mason, Brother Mark Maston, Dr. James Curtis, and Brother George Craig. Amen. Those are our known sick and shut in, but I know you guys have already been coming through and posting your specific requests, so we want to acknowledge those at this time. Amen. Amen. Let's see. Our first prayer um, request for tonight is, let's see, Sister Jacqueline Critton has asked us to please pray for healing for Debbie Hamilton, um, Tamiko Johnson, and herself. Amen. We are praying with you, uh, Miss C. Prayers for godly relationships, prayers for direction and guidance. Amen. Sister Brie Riddle, Brie Riddle we are praying with you. Uh, Trustee Esther McGear asks us to pray for Joseph Raglan. We are praying with you, Trustee. Thank you so much for that prayer request. Social prayer for the Sanders and the Price family. Amen. We are praying with you, Sister Etchison. Amen. Amen. Uh, Sister Addie Chapman has a special prayer request for Sister Addie Chapman. Amen. For patience and healing. Social prayer for Brother Isaiah and Brother Dwight Chapman to continue to stay focused. Amen to that focus. Amen. Social prayers for, um, I think that says Cody and his son for comfort for the loss of his dad, Ned Sims. Amen. We are praying. Amen. Social prayer request for Brother J.R. Rogers. We are praying with you, Brother Atkins. Social prayer for uh, her. Uh, oh, uh, Brother K uh, Kevin Gibson's upcoming surgery on Monday. We are praying successful surgery and healing of your whole body. Amen to that. Social prayer from Deaconess Bogan uh, for her sister, Emma Howard, uh, who was at Bronson, B.C. We are praying with you. Amen. Social prayer of comfort, strength, healing, peace, and joy for Brother Ronnie and family in the passing of his brother recently. Amen. Thank you so much for that prayer request. Special prayer for the White, Bennett, Brown, Sweet, and Stinson families. Amen. Sister White, we are praying with you. Special prayer. Uh Praying for special help for all the people struggling with mental help. Amen. We are praying with you. Such a prayer for Brother James Lee. Amen, Brother Atkins. We are praying with you as well. Amen to that. Such a prayer for all students to finish strong. Yes, Sister Jamila. Yes, finish strong. Amen to that. Yes, yes, yes. Such a prayer of comfort for the Birch family in the loss of their cousin, Diane Birch of um, Fort Wayne. Amen. We're praying with you, Deaconess Bogan, and your entire family. Amen to that. Such a prayer request for the Carter, Cooper, Estelle families, Calvin Lewis and son Charles, Nicole Green, mother Florence Brewer and family, Jerry and Paulette Thompson, uh, Janice Thompson, Geneva Henderson, Lamar Wilson, uh, Shelton Ford Sr. for gun control, prayer for comfort for the Sims family. Amen. Thank you so much, Sister Cooper, for all those prayer requests. Amen. Special prayer for more college students, young adults, young youth, men, families, and elders to join Macedonia. Amen to that growth and increase. Amen. Amen. Social prayer of healing for Asia Marche. Amen. We are praying with you, Sister Brianne White. Amen. Social prayer for Mother Vera Simpson. Amen, Brother v Mother Vera. We are praying with you. Social prayer for unity, diligence, and strength for all ministry leaders and members. Amen to that. I love it. Social prayer for Sister Beulah Hampton for healing 
Amen to that. We are praying for you, sister. Special prayer for school children to stay safe. Amen. And for all the staff to also stay safe. Amen to that, Sister Etchison. Thank you. Such a prayer that we are doers of the word and work, not just hearers. Amen to that, Sister McKenzie. Such a prayer for Anthony White and Brianne White to grow in doing ministry together. I love it. I love it. I love it. Such a prayer for Sister Emma Pearl Crumb. I'm praying with you and for her. Amen to that. Thank you so much, Sister Cooper. Such a prayer for all kingdom marriages. Amen. Amen. Yes, we are praying for those marriages with you. Such a prayer for daily healing, comfort, peace, joy, prosperity, provision, strength, and wisdom. For all my brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen to that, Sister Lo. I love it. Such a prayer for Alice Mack, uh, Elena Bruno, Andrea Barclay. Barclay I hope I said that right. Um, Chanel Barkley, um, Shirleen Barkley, Michael Lewis, the Harrison, Harrison, the Harris family, and the Strickland family. Amen, brother, Mother Harris. We are praying with you and for them. Such a prayer for Nakisha Jones that God sends her the help that she needs. Glory to God. Amen to that. I love it. Such a prayer for Brother Ronnie. Um, and he has arrangements on Facebook if you need it. Uh, such a prayer for his sister, Sabrina. Uh, also for Ned's home going on the 23rd. Amen. Thank you. Special prayer, continue prayer to pray um, blessings upon Sister uh, Crittenden's grandchildren and her great-grandchildren. Also that her two daughters and son-in-law and her siblings and their families. Amen. We are praying with you, Sister Crittenden. Such a prayer uh, for the Langston family, the uh, for Paula Ware and the family. Uh, the Patterson family, and for Sister Robbie Jean Patterson herself for patience and healing. Amen to that. We are praying with you. Such a prayer for Sister uh, Marnique Hobson. We are praying with you, uh, Sister Renita Craig. Amen. Prayer for all the gun violence that it will end. Amen, Trustee McGee. We need that to end yesterday. Amen to that. Thank you so much for that prayer request. Special prayer that the Holy Spirit rise up in every believer and push them into their full God purpose. Reverend Bellamy, I hear you on that prayer. Amen. Special prayer for Brother Dion Bellamy, Ty Spicer, and Amari Spicer. Amen to that. We are praying with you. Social prayer for those going through domestic violence. Amen to that. Those populations that go unlooked, but they are struggling and they need prayer as well. Amen to that. Amen. Social prayer for the family of Carmen McNeil uh, and two more close friends that, that has passed away, Kenny K family um, and my, her good friend, Ross husband, Joseph. Amen. Thank you, church family. We love you. Thank you. Social prayer for Ry the Riley and Johnson family for healing. Amen. We are praying with you. Such a prayer for our pastor and first lady and family and all the preachers whom preach in spirit and in truth and ministries. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you so much for that prayer request. Such a prayer for all those suffering from mental illness and those experiencing life situations that may be creating it. Amen to that, Reverend Bellamy. We are praying for those individuals. Such a prayer for single parents raising kids for strength. Amen to that. Yes, yes. Such a prayer for those who are seeking help from their addictions and for those who have overcome their addictions, anxiety and depression, patients on dialysis, and those in need of a kidney transplant. Amen to that. We want to pray for all those populations. Such a prayer for Devon Sweet for guidance. Amen. Thank you so much. Such a prayer for peace, clarity, and direction of all God's people. Amen to that. Thank you so much, Reverend Bellamy. Such a prayer that our lives, our, our ministry, even outside of church. Amen. We don't want to just pray that ministry is well, but we want to pray that our lives and our homes are well as well. Prayer for Kyrie that he calms down so he can continue to pray. Amen. 
Such a prayer for Brother Ronnie Sims and family. Oh, look, God works quickly. Such a prayer for Sister Bobette Hobson. We are praying for you, sister. Prayers for all high school and college graduates to stay focused. Yes, finish strong. Stay focused. You got this. Such a prayer for the Craig, Maxwell, and Union families. Amen. Such a prayer for the incarcerated and the MMBC incarcerated congregation. Amen. And we don't want to just pray for them. We want to pray that it continues to grow, that incarcerated congregation. Amen. Prayers for the Gibson, Low, McKenzie, King, Kurtz, Nettles, Kings, Earns, and Browns family. Ooh, I did that. <laughs> a special prayer for those with diabetes, kidney disease, chronic pain, and reduced mobility to be healed in Jesus' name, be encouraged, and to trust God. Amen. Amen. Prayers for health and strength for Brother Justin Fuller and Sister Hattie Harris and for Clarence Harris. Amen. First Lady, we are praying with you. Such a prayer for Joshua and Asia. Amen. We are praying with you, Reverend Bellamy. Special prayer for safe travels for all Macedonians. Amen to that. Amen. Such a prayer for all increase in our spiritual net worth. Amen. I like how you worded that. Such a prayer for you and your family, Brother Sims. Amen. We are praying with you. Such a prayer for traveling mercies for Brittany Birch. Amen. Thank you so much, Brother Atkins. We are praying with you. Prayer for all young people to stay focused on their future and our father, not their feelings. That's a that's a word right there. <laughs> for special prayer for those who are having mental health problems. Amen to that. Such a prayer for um that we move, that we excuse me, we move knowing we are on assignment and desire God's will to be done for us. Amen. Such a prayer that we remember we fight spiritually from a winning position. Amen. We always win. Prayers that we break up with sin and have an uh, expanded appetite for the word. Yes, yes, yes. Such a prayer for for the words, brother, Ronnie Sims and family. Amen to that. We are praying. Such a prayer request for brother T. Etchison. Amen. We are praying with you. Such a prayer for Mother Essie Curtis, Reverend Simpson, Mother Simpson, Mother Maston, and all the senior MMBC soldiers of the gospel. Keep and cover them. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Special prayer for Brother Ronnie Sims and family. We are praying with you, Brother Ronnie, and we are with you. Special prayer for Brother T. Atchison. Amen. I think we covered that. Amen to that. Special prayer of uh excuse me that prayer and obedience become so infectious that believers can't stop following god amen to that make it be contagious such a prayer for prince Kyrie that he be just fine and take a nap so we can finish service amen <laughs> Such a prayer for wisdom and discipline to maximize current and future opportunities. Amen to that. Amen. And I just want to throw out there a special prayer for the Ioko, Mastin, and Jackson families. Amen. Macedonia, that's a lot of prayers. But guess what? We got the power to pray it all. Amen. So we want to put some scripture and more power behind these prayers. And we want to look at our scriptures for our prayer requests. When it comes to sick and shut in, we want to pray Psalms 103, 2 and 3. It says, bless the Lord, all my soul, and forget not his benefits. What are his benefits? Who forgiveth all thine iniquities and who healeth all thine diseases. There is no disease that he cannot heal, Macedonia. Amen. And then for our special prayer request, we want to look at Psalm 55 and 22. Psalm 55 and 22 says, Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. Amen. Amen. Give it to him and he got you. He's going to take care of it and you won't be moved in the process. And then finally, for our bereaved families, we want to pray out of 2 Corinthians 1, verse 3 and 4. It says, Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, 
who comforted us in our tribulations, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. We know that he was there in the midnight hour when we needed him and needed comfort. So we can pray on the behalf of those who need him now, knowing that he can and he will and he has. So we want to pray our special prayer requests, our sick and shut in and our bereavement. We want to take three minutes on this prayer. Our last and final prayer of the night. Macedonia, let's finish strong. Ready and pray. Amen, Macedonia. Amen. We have prayed hard. We have prayed for all those things. And I know God is already moving on our behalf. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, that we serve a God that is there with us and hears us and answers our prayers. What a privilege and honor. Amen. But we're not done yet because we have prayed our prayers and that ends our prayer service. But we got some more stuff to do. Amen. First, we want to make some shout Outs. We want to acknowledge that you are here, that you are present with us, that you have decided to come together as a body and pray to God and acknowledge God and learn some more about God. So we want to make sure we shout you out. We want to say hello. We want to say welcome and thank you uh, as we continue to move through our service. Amen. Amen. Let's do so. First of all, I say good morning, good evening, excuse me, to Sister Stephanie Mastin. Mama, good evening. Hello. 
Uh, good evening to um, Brother Sims. Good evening. Good to see you. Thank you and welcome. Sorry, Simmons. Not say Sims. Amen. So, uh, good evening to Sister Jacqueline Crittenden. Amen. Welcome to this prayer service and Bible study. Good evening, uh, Sister Brie Riddle. Good evening. Good to see you. Uh, good evening to uh, Trustee uh, Bogan. Good to see you. Both of you. Mr. Bogan and Mrs. Bogan. I'm sure you're both there. Shout outs to Trustee Esther McGear. Good evening to you. Good evening to Sister Jamila McKenzie. Good to see you. Good evening. Good evening to Reverend Lowe. Amen. Good to see you. Amen. Good evening to Brother Ronnie Sims. Good evening. We are praying for you, brother. First, uh, shout outs to Sister Wendelin Etcherson. Good to see you tonight. Amen. Shout outs to Mother Maddie Harris. Good evening to you. Amen. Shout outs to Brother Kevin Gibson. Amen. We are, we see you. Shout outs to Sister Breanne White. Good evening. Good to see you. Shout outs to Sister Carla Lowe. Good evening. We say welcome, welcome, welcome. Shout outs to uh, Sister Robbie Patterson. Good evening to you. Shout outs to uh, Sister Sandra Cooper. Good evening and welcome. Shout out to Sister Addie Chapman. Good evening and welcome. Good to see you. Shout out to Brother Will Atkins. Good evening and welcome, welcome, welcome. Shout outs to Reverend Shauna Bellamy. Good evening to you as well. Shout out to Brother um, Atkins. Good evening. I'm sure Sister Atkins is right there along with you. Amen. Shout outs to Brother Tyrone Simmons. Good evening. Thanks for watching. Thanks for joining us. Shout outs to Sister um, Ramisa Cage. Good evening to you, family. Good to see you. Good to see you. Amen. Amen. I know I saw First Lady. Shout outs to you as well. And Pastor, good evening to you both. Shout out to Sister Carmen McNeil. Good evening. Good to see you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Shout out to Sister Renita Craig. Good evening. Good evening. Good to see you. Shout out to Sister Annie Riley. Good to see you on here as well. Good evening and welcome, welcome, welcome. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I also see Brother William Word Jr. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good to see you on today. Shout out to Sister Yvonne Brooklander. Welcome. Good to see you today as well. Amen. Shout out to Sister Greta Pinnock. Good evening. Good to see you and welcome to prayer service and Bible study. And if there are any more out there, we say welcome. We say good evening. We say thank you for joining us because you could have been anywhere else, but you decided to come to prayer service and Bible study on tonight. Amen. Amen. We want to move now to our announcements. We have a few announcements that we want to make sure that you are aware of so that we can be on the same page as the body of Christ. Amen. So let's look at some of our announcements. Our first announcement I know is simply to say thank you for all you do. You continue to be faithful. You continue to be present. You continue to work hard for the ministry. And for that, we say thank you, thank you, thank you. There would never be enough thank yous to say thank you enough. And Macedonia is what it is because you work hard at what you do. So thank you so much, Macedonia. Amen. Our next announcement is for... The 2023 Senior Recognition is going to be May 21st during the 11 a.m. worship experience. And this is for college and high school and graduate recognition. Amen. So we will look forward to recognizing those seniors on May 21st. Amen. Amen. Women's Day. Amen. All women, we ask that you meet on May 21st after worship, after the worship experience. So not only are we shouting out those seniors on this day, but after that, we're going to bring the women together to talk about Women's Day. So make sure you meet in the L. If you have any questions, see Sister Carla Lowe or Sister Brianna Foster. Amen. Amen. Five, our young adults, don't forget, you got Sunday school too. That's right. It's the second and the fourth Sundays at 9.30 a.m. And I promise you, you don't want to miss it. Bring a friend, bring a couple friends, but be there at the Vibe Sunday School on the second and fourth Sundays. Amen. 
Amen. Oh, man, don't worry. I didn't forget about you. Man's Dominion Man's Fellowship is on the second and fourth Mondays, and they are from 630 to 8 p.m. Come fellowship with other men of God and grow closer to the word. They are still working on their book, The Purpose Driven Life, and you don't want to miss it. Amen. Amen. The 2023 Calhoun County Senior Expo is May 18th. That's tomorrow. Guess what? And it's at 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Kellogg Arena in Battle Creek. So you don't want to miss that. Make sure that you are present. If you need a ride, Community Action got you. The number is right there on the screen. Catch a ride and be at that Calhoun County Senior Expo. Amen. Amen, Macedonia. I know that there was one more announcement for Brother Ronnie Sims as far as his uh, brother's home going. And I want to make sure that I get it on there for everyone to know. Amen. Here we go. It is going to be May 23rd. May 23rd from at 11 a.m. is family hour. Amen. And then the service will be um, at 12 p.m. And that is at Grace Temple in Albion. Amen. So we want to continue to pray for that family, pray for their strength and their comfort and to be there and support. Amen. Amen. Macedonia. Well, guess what? That was a mouthful. Amen. That was a lot, but we are to the next part and the part that's going to be the most beneficial is going to be this lesson. Amen. And I am the teacher as well for tonight. So we will be moving on to our next portion of prayer service and Bible study, the Bible study portion. Amen. And we just want to first, before I move to that, acknowledge our pastor. We know that God has blessed us with an amazing shepherd who continues to feed us with knowledge and understanding. And we just want to acknowledge our pastor, Pastor Bobby J. McKenzie. We say thank you. We acknowledge you. We are so godly thankful that we have you as our pastor. And I personally am honor to be in the spot where you stand to teach the lesson, to teach the word of God. So I get the privilege and honor to stand where you stand tonight and to teach the word of God. Amen. Amen. So get your papers out, get your pencils, open up your Bibles, open up your Bibles. And we are going to learn um, a lesson and we're going to come from Psalm 40 and uh, Psalm 41 through 3. So open up those Bibles. Get ready. Get some pencil because I got some stuff for you to write down. Amen. Amen. Our lesson tonight, our lesson tonight is called Third Degree Testimony. Third Degree Testimony. And like I said before, our scripture for tonight is coming out of Psalm 40 verse 1 through 3. And I'm going to be reading from the King James Version of the Bible. Amen. It says, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of the a horrible pit and out of the miry clay and set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. And he hath put a new song in my mouth. Glory to God. Even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. The word of God. Amen. Amen. Again, third degree testimony. Our aim tonight, Macedonia, is to teach believers how to use testimonies to impact others. That's what we want to do. I want to teach believers how to use testimonies to impact others. Amen. So as I secure your interest, I want to tell you we all have testimonies. I hope nobody's sitting there thinking you don't because we all have testimonies. Whether we are, whether you are aware of yours or not, you have one. Some of our testimonies are long. Some are short. Some are deep. Some are light. Some make you cry and some make you shout. But the bottom line is we all have testimonies and not just one or two, but several. Some of us have been freed from addictions, healed from diseases, pulled out of sin, separated from trauma, transformed into a new you. We all have testimonies. But the question I ask you today why do you have a testimony? Think about it. 
Why do you have a testimony? I feel I feel like somebody needs to answer that in the comments. I want to hear some discussion tonight. Why do you have a testimony? Why is it important? Well, let's look at Revelations 12. Revelations 12 and 11 says, and they overcome him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they love not their lives unto death. Your testimony, Macedonia, is a weapon to overcome the enemy. I say your testimony is a weapon to overcome the enemy. Amen. Not just in your life, but the enemy in the lives of others. Wow. Right. Right. Who knew? No wonder. No wonder so many Christians avoid telling their testimonies nowadays. So many. Could it be that the devil found a way to stop us from using our weapon as a of testimony to attack him? Could it be? Could it be that he whispered in some of our ear and told us no one will believe you? Everyone will know your business if you tell your testimony. You will leave yourself vulnerable to others if you tell your testimony. Could it be that many of us believed him? Many of us believed him. Amen. So many of us are experiencing God move in mighty ways and keeping what we have witnessed to ourselves. Whew, goodness gracious. Pastor discussed the, com the conversation of atheists who asked the question, how bad do we have to hate our neighbor to have the answer to their problems and the way out for, their to, for them to have salvation? And then we decide not to give it to them. How bad do we have to hate somebody to have the answer to their problem and not give it to them? To allow them to die, to suffer, to hurt, and we keep what they need to ourselves. Sounds harsh, right? But we all do it all the time, Macedonia. That co-worker is struggling with life. Your children struggling with direction. Friends struggling with bad habits. And the list goes on and on and on. How dare we get the privilege of God making powerful moves in our lives and we not tell anyone and only or only tell just a select few. Yet our testimony, our testimony is supposed to be our weapon. Has this been you? Don't worry. Don't worry, because today all that changes and we will pick up our weapon, pick it off the shelf, dust it off and use it the way God intended for it to be used. Amen. So today, today we will take a look at David's testimony and, and allow it to align with our own. We will learn how our testimony can change our personal walk and have an impact on others. Just like the degrees of a bird, we have three degrees of our own testimony that are powerful enough to meet needs, to transform lives, and to save souls. Today, we will explore each degree and use them the way God intended for them to be used. Amen? Y'all ready? Y'all ready? All right. Degree number one, the first degree. First degree is the testimony of discovery. Our first degree is the testimony of discovery coming out of verse one. It says, I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. That's verse one. Amen. Discover the testimony of discovery. To discover means to find, to find something or someone unexpectedly or in the course of a search to find something or someone unexpectedly or in the course of a search. Amen. God heard me. Amen. He discovered my cry. I cried out. I waited for him and he discovered me in my mess. Amen. I waited patiently. He said, waiting, waited patiently, meaning he waited and didn't have worry. He waited with no worry. He waited with the expectation of discovery. Amen. We have to learn how to wait patiently. Wait knowing that God will answer. 
waiting knowing that God will discover the solution to our problems. Amen. And then it said he inclined to me. He got closer to me because I put away the worry that was in my way. He was able to move closer. Amen. I moved worry out of the way and God had a room to move closer. And I discovered I discovered another side of him that I did not know before. When we go through certain trials and tribulations, we get exposed to a different side of God that we did not know before. Amen. When we are struggling with our mental health, we get to experience his peace. Amen. When we are struggling with a sickness and we are in distress and our body is aching, we get to discover God's healing. When he inclines to us in our mess, in our distress, we discover a part of God that we never seen before. Amen. The verse says, he heard my cry. He discovered, we discovered each other. Amen. I discovered a part of him and he discovered some more of me. Others, we discovered each other's attention and came to an understanding. Amen. We discovered each other. God saw that I was now focused on him and not my worry. Amen. In my patient waiting. And I discovered God attending to me right in the midst of my mess of my storm, of my trial, and of my pain. I discovered a part of God that was there when I'm in distress. Not just the God that I shout about when things are good, but a part of God that is there in my distress. My distress. I discovered God. I discovered that he can heal. I discovered that he can deliver. I discovered that he can set free because I was in distress and he heard me. He heard me and answered my cry. Amen. God hears your cry, Macedonia. Somebody needs to know that tonight. God hears your cry. Whatever it is that you don't tell nobody else that you have in the back of your mind that sometimes you try to ignore, sometimes you try to push away, sometimes it agonizes you and you still don't see anything. God hears it. And he wants you to discover him in a new way. The testimony of discovery. We know that God hears us because Jeremiah 33 and 3. Jeremiah 33 and 3 says, call unto me. This is God. And I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Discovery. I want to show you something new. Amen. Call on me. Don't try to figure it out on your own. Don't try to ask somebody else, but call me. Call your Lord. Call your Savior, and I will answer thee and show you, let you discover a part of me that you have never seen. We can look at Psalm 118 and 5. Psalm 118 says, and 5 says, I called upon the Lord in distress. And the Lord answered me and set me in a large place. Amen. Second Samuel 22 and 7. Second Samuel 22 verse 7 says, excuse me, in my distress, in my mess, right? I called upon the Lord and cried to my God. And he did hear my voice out of his temple and my cry did enter his ears listen all these are testimonies all these are testimonies of discovery amen think of your testimony of discovery think of yours and then type it in the comments remember we shared our testimony to help change others somebody need to know that they're not alone with whatever they're going through so i encourage you share your testimony of discovery right down below so that somebody else can know that god can and god will amen if you're ready if only if you're ready to use your weapon amen i don't want to pressure nobody know that there is someone in your life that needs to get through their testimony of discovery. Somebody is trying to get through that testimony, but they need you to encourage them that they can and that God will. Amen. Amen. Our first point was a point. Uh, first degree, excuse me, was a testimony of discovery. And we're going to move on to our second degree. Second degree testimony is the testimony of deliverance. The testimony of deliverance. Let's come out of verse two. It says, he brought me 
also out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and established my goings. Glory to God. Just reading that make me want to shout, Macedonia. He brought me up out of a horrible pit. Listen, we were sinking in sin, in my horrible habits, in all my ungodly desires. I was living in darkness and misery and confusion, and I wanted change. Amen. But I couldn't do it on my own. I tried. I tried. I tried, and I kept messing up, and I kept sinking, and I kept falling. But God, amen. I tried, and I failed. But then he set my feet upon a rock. He didn't send me in some more mess. He set me on a rock stable. Amen. He pulled me out and leveled me. He put both feet on the ground, stable and solid. He placed me in him, right? He placed me in his word, in his truth, in his safety. He placed me in his kindness, in his grace, in his mercy. He placed me in his love. He picked me up out of the mess that I created myself and placed me in him. Amen. That's a testimony. Let's look at Psalms. I got a few verses out of Psalms 34 that I want to read to us. Amen. Psalms 34. We're going to look at, uh, we're going to look at 4, 7, 17, and 19. Okay. It says, I sought the Lord and he heard me. And deliver me from all my fears. There's some things you are worried about and you are fearful about. He's going to pull you out of that. It says, the angel of the Lord encamped around about them that fear him and delivered them. Listen, this is the testimony of delivery. The righteous cry and the Lord heareth and delivereth them out of all their troubles. Come on. I hope y'all hear this testimony. I hope it's blessing somebody. It says in 19, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but guess what? The Lord delivereth them out of them all. Macedonia, whatever you went through, God pulled you out of it. That's why you're standing here right now. Whatever you're going through, he's already working on pulling you out right now. And guess what? Whatever is down the line to come in your life that you may be fearful of, he is going to pull you out again. How do I know that? Because he did it for me. How do I know that? Because he did it for the people that we just read about in the word of God. God is a deliverer. Amen. And this is the second level of testimony. It is the testimony of deliverance. He is a deliverer. Amen. No matter what you go through, what you face, what mess you get yourself in. In, God can deliver you. He did it for me and on multiple occasions. Amen. I'm giving y'all the script. I hope y'all are using this when y'all go somewhere and testify to somebody else. He did it for me so he can do it for you. That's it. That's your testimony. Let's look at Psalms 107. Psalms 107 and 6. It says, then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble. They didn't get out by themselves. They didn't figure out how to get out because they came. They called on the Lord in their trouble. And he, he delivered them out of their distress. He did it. Now, listen, we make jokes about people talking about, I got to get myself right and I'm going to come to Jesus. But the crazy thing is, a lot of us that's already come to Jesus, we get in some mess after we came to Jesus and then try to get ourselves out. Knowing we already know that he's the one to deliver us. Amen. We got to allow God to deliver us. We got to humble ourselves, get on our knees and say, God, I did this. Forgive me and pull me up out of it. Amen. Listen to the testimony. If it's encouraging you and you already know the Lord, imagine, imagine the impact it would have on someone who just heard about him. Think about that. If testimonies can move us and we already know the Lord, those who don't even know him, think how powerful it could be for them. Amen. And the word says on our verse that we're going through, it says he established my goings. He established my goings. Macedonia, God placed me on a rock. He is my rock, right? He placed me in himself, in his word and in his will then. Then he took my head out of the fog. He showed me the safe direction to go and allowed me to walk in it. 
That's what it's saying. He established my goings. He took me out of the fog and the confusion. He pulled me up out of it. And he said, hey, you up now. You're out of it. I pulled you out. Focus. Go that way. Right there. That's the safe way. That's where you need to go. Amen. Many of us are here today at Bible study because he showed us where to go. He not only pulled us out, but then he showed us where to go. And he put people around us to help us stay focused on where to go. Amen. The testimony of deliverance. I'm not what I used to be, right? Testimony of deliverance. I don't do what I used to do. Testimony of deliverance. I don't talk like I used to talk. I don't do the drugs no more. I don't drink all the time no more. I don't answer those late night texts. I don't get depressed and stuck in my feelings no more. I don't get angry so fast no more. I don't seek revenge no more. He pulled me out. He placed me on the right direction and established my goings. I got new goals, Macedonia. I got new dreams. I got new plans better than before on a new path. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. Amen. Amen. Macedonia, we got one more point. First degree, the testimony of discovery. Second degree, the testimony of deliverance. And the third degree is the testimony of discipleship. Woo! The testimony of discipleship. Verse three, it says, and he has put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto God. Many, these are the people, many shall see it. Oh, sorry. Many shall see it. I put my hand in my ear and fear and shall trust in the Lord. Trust. That's the weapon right there. You just use your weapon you praise God and they saw it and they like, what is this? And they trusted in the Lord. It says they put a new song in my mouth. The testimony started on the inside in private, but now it's so powerful. It's spilling out of my mouth. I go to church. I can't help but shout. I go to work. I can't help but tell somebody. I go down the street. Somebody got to know what God did for me. I can't keep it to myself. Praise God. He discovered my cry. He heard me in my distress. Hallelujah. He inclined unto me and got close enough to me to pull me right out of my mess, carry me to his safety, and then show me where to go from there. And let me tell you, honey, where I'm going is better than where I could ever imagine. Where I'm going, I could have never dreamed of. You got to join me. That's the testimony right there, Macedonia. That right there, that's going to change lives. That's going to meet needs. That's going to save souls. What does your new song look like? It looks like Galatians 2 and 20. Galatians 2 and 20 says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And a life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Amen. Your new song looks like 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17, 17 through 21. It says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new and all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself by Christ Jesus and have given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Verse 19, to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not excuse me, imputing their trespasses unto him and have committed unto us the word of reconciliation. That is the new song. God has restored me. He saw that I was in sin. He saw that I was in distress and he helped me to discover him. And he pulled me out of my mess. He pulled me out and gave me a new song. And now I need you to come with me. I need you to join with me. Amen. And verse 20 says, and now we are ambassadors for Christ. That's our job. As though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Jesus' stead, 
be ye reconciled to God. I need you to do the same thing I did, right? Verse 21, for he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of in him. We, not just me, we, amen, might be made the righteousness of God in him. He made me new and I got a new purpose now. I got destiny to chase after. The devil thought he had me, but he didn't because God swooped up and brought me up out and joined uh, added me with him. Amen. Join me. Join us. This is our testimony. Me and Christ, there is room at the cross, as they say, right? There is my testimony. Here it is. I have to share it with you, right? Macedonia, we have to share our testimony. We have testimonies. Whether you believe it or not, you have a testimony. Share it. Share it, share it, share it, share it. Don't hit the share button on Facebook only, but share it through your mouth to your coworkers, to your family, to your friends. Share it. Don't sit on them. Our testimonies have the power to change, to heal, to deliver, to save. Don't let all God did for you go to waste. Don't let all God did for you go to waste. Share your testimony with someone every single day. That's our karaoke carryover. I encourage you to make the purpose to share your testimony, whatever part or piece it may be, with someone every single day. Starting today. Yep, it's eight o'clock. Starting today. And I and say I have to share. Call somebody call somebody good on facebook share your testimony you have enough to tell the world you have enough to tell the world and as we close we all have testimonies and the power to use it to impact others life has ups and downs but god remains the same there is purpose in every situation and circumstance we know this by Romans 8 and 28, which says that all things work together for the good of them that love God and are called according to his purpose. That's you. When we go through each degree of testimony, we not only come out better ourselves, but we also have the ability to make others better too. Amen. Share your testimony, all three degrees. That is our lesson tonight. And we all 10 minutes early. Let us pray, Macedonia. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for this amazing prayer service and Bible study. We thank you for allowing us the privilege to come to you with our requests and our prayers. And we thank you for hearing us. We thank you for moving on our behalf. God, we thank you for each and every individual who has come on this broadcast and got closer to you. We pray that they take all that they learn and take it with them and grow and do and be better. God, we pray for our pastor and first lady and first family. Continue to protect them. Continue to keep them, to cover them with your grace, mercy, and your love. And God, we thank you for showing us how impactful our testimony can be. God, strengthen us, enable us so that we can go out and share and use the weapon that you gave us to overcome the enemy. We love you tonight. We glorify you. We magnify you. And it is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Macedonia, we love you. Have a great night. See you on Sunday. Bye-bye.